forecasting for the Commonwealth Games. It's quite a big area that we're covering and slightly different weather effects in all of them. And how dust may be suppressing hurricanes. They haven't been able to form intertropical cyclones over the Atlantic because of this dry air. It's Friday the 5th of August and you're listening to Weathersnap from the Met Office. Hello, I'm Claire Nazir. Welcome to Weathersnap, an insider's guide to the weather headlines. The 2022 Commonwealth Games, currently taking place in Birmingham, continue to see fierce but friendly rivalries playing out as athletes from 72 nations battle for the remaining medals. A characteristic of this year's event has been the high temperatures and a team of Met Office forecasters has been on hand throughout the Games, providing athletes and organisers with round-the-clock weather information. Earlier, I spoke to one of those forecasters, Lauren Hopkinson, who described her daily routine. So Lauren, you've been forecasting for the Commonwealth Games. First of all, tell me about the atmosphere. What's it like being there in Birmingham? I think that's been my favourite thing about it so far, both in the office and around Birmingham. Um, Lots of people I've spoken to that live in Birmingham, they've said they've never seen it this busy, this exciting, this vibrant. Everybody's just got such good things to say about it. Are you one of many as a team from the Met Office? There's been five of us here over the duration of the whole Games, but we had a little bit of a changeover period in the middle. We've had one person here throughout and then there was two at the beginning and then two of us came for the second half of the Games. What's the greatest concern you have with the weather? Is it heat, rain, wind? It completely varies between the different sports, to be honest. Um, Some sports are really interested in the heat and the humidity. Some sports are very interested in the winds. Um, Some sports are very interested and can be completely cancelled if there's any rainfall. So it's completely varied between all the different sports, which has been really interesting. And I presume because of the heat wave that we've seen, the dryness of the air, that's something which is at the forefront of many competitors' minds right now. Definitely when um, we had meteorologists first come out, it was definitely something which was a key piece that they were getting asked about. Thankfully in Birmingham, we haven't had too many issues and we have had rainfall here, not like the southeast of the UK. And what are your daily duties? What do you actually do every day? We've been getting out a daily report that's compiled for all the different sectors that are going into the operations of the games. Uh, So create our forecast for that, including for the day ahead and also an outlook. Um, And then much of the other things have been quite specific and um, a little bit more ad hoc. We have had a forecast for the cricket that we've been doing throughout the games um, twice a day every day. So they're very dependent on the rain. In terms of the forecasting, it's site specific. So you're using a very high resolution model, I presume. Is there anything about Birmingham which creates its own sort of meso scale environment? There's quite a wide area where the venues are covering, like the, there's um, venues in the Birmingham city centre itself. There's some a little bit further north, like in Cannock Chase, where there's some cycling going on today, which is in a forest area. And then there's going further down towards Coventry. So it's quite a big area that we're covering and slightly different weather effects in all of them. Obviously, in the city, it gets hotter as well compared to other areas. Has it been a, a, a special event, a special experience, a, a learning curve? It's definitely been a special event, like we said earlier about the atmosphere of the games and stuff. It's been a really good thing to be involved in. It's just really interesting seeing all the different organisations come together to create such a massive event. It's definitely been special. Commonwealth forecaster Lauren Hopkinson. In global weather news, southwestern regions of India remain on high alert as more heavy rain is forecast through the coming week, with some parts expecting as much as 400 millimetres. This is around half the monthly total for this time of year, bringing with it the further risk of flash flooding and landslides. This comes as northeastern states remain in significant rainfall deficit, even as the monsoon crosses the halfway mark. Across continental Europe, temperatures of 5 and in some places 10 degrees above average are expected through this coming week. Whilst not as extreme as recent heat waves, The persistent hot air across much of Iberia and southern France will likely exacerbate ongoing wildfires, as well as health impacts from poor air quality. The Atlantic hurricane season began on the 1st of June, and at that time tropical storm models were suggesting that 2022 would see a higher than average number of storms. 
we are about a third of the way through the season. That forecast has yet to materialise. There are several factors that may have affected the storm count so far, which may be about to shift. To explain, here's tropical prediction scientist Julian Hemming. Julian, first of all, we're not yet at the sort of the midpoint of the hurricane season, but we've had a couple of months worth of potential tropical storms, but it's been very quiet so far. Yes, we did have a few storms very early in the season. We had three storms, which are Alex, Bonnie and Colin. All of those in the Atlantic were relatively short-lived. Bonnie did move across into the East Pacific and become a hurricane. But uh, since then, we've had a very quiet period during July. And it seems that this is primarily due to uh, the fact we've had a lot of dry air over the tropical Atlantic uh, during the last few weeks. And some of that is attributable to outbreaks of Saharan dust, which have been lifted into the atmosphere and then moved out across the Atlantic. And that's tended to uh, dry the air, which means that even though we have been getting easterly waves moving off the coast of Africa out into the Atlantic, which is the kind of precursor for tropical cyclones, they haven't been able to form into tropical cyclones over the Atlantic because of this dry air. And in fact, they have ended up forming into tropical cyclones over the East Pacific because we have actually had quite an active period there where we've had uh, eight tropical storms so far this season. Six of those have become hurricanes, but we haven't seen so much in the Atlantic so far this season. Everything is so connected when it comes to meteorology and the, the movement of air and moisture, etc. And we do look to North and West Africa to give us some indication of what could happen next across the tropical North Atlantic and Caribbean. What are the indicators suggesting? Well, I mean, in a typical year, climatologically speaking, we do expect uh, Atlantic hurricane activity to pick up during the second half of August and particularly through September. Certainly the indications from some of the longer range models at the moment are suggesting that the West African monsoon, which is the kind of enhanced storm activity over Western Africa, uh, will increase during the second half of August. And that should have the result of uh, injecting more moisture out into the tropical Atlantic. And so it means that during that time, it's possible that some of the easterly waves which move out off the coast of Africa could in fact have the right conditions to become tropical storms in the Atlantic instead of those waves moving all the way across to the Pacific before they have the right conditions. So yes, we do expect that the, the long-term predictions for the next few weeks are that in the second half of August we may start seeing some Atlantic tropical storm activity. From your experience analysing the seasons through many years, is this something which is typical where it can start very quiet and then ramp up? Sometimes it can in the Atlantic, it can be almost like a switch gets flicked at a certain point. There was a, a particular season, I think it was back in 2010, where we had a relatively quiet start to the season. And then we got to, I think it was the third week of August. And then suddenly one of the easterly waves, which moved off the coast of Africa, became a tropical storm. And then almost every other wave for the next six weeks became a tropical storm. We ended up having a very active season, even though it was a relatively slow start. So the seasonal forecasts we've had this year have been going for an active season and the updates coming out now are still suggesting an active season, maybe not quite as much as they were at the early forecasts at the beginning of the season. But um, that's still quite possible that um, we could get effectively like this kind of switch gets flicked and the Atlantic suddenly becomes very active. And the, the Atlantic activity does often get compressed into a, a period of six to eight weeks where we see most of the activity. So a relatively quiet start doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be quiet for the rest of the season. Whilst the UK sits many thousands of miles away from where hurricane activity is, sometimes we do inherit the remnants of these tropical storms and can make for a wetter end to the summer or even start to autumn. Yes, I mean, we, when, when we do get that Atlantic activity, particularly the storms which develop over the eastern and central parts of the Atlantic, then some of those can turn to the north and the northeast and head towards uh, Western Europe. And so we can, as they make a transition into a, a, a kind of more conventional mid-latitude low pressure area, that, that can have some impact on the UK. So once the Atlantic hurricane season does really get going and we do see some storms, then that's a possibility. Of course, that's all dependent upon the precise tracks of those storms, because sometimes they will 
uh, continue on a on a westward track and end up in the Caribbean and affecting the USA. If that happens, then those storms obviously won't have any impact uh, directly on the UK. But for the ones which turn northwards whilst they're still out at sea, then those are the ones we have to watch for uh, any possible impacts on, on the UK and Western Europe. Here in the UK, we are in need of some rain. Southern England had its driest July on record and parts of the southeast will soon be under a hosepipe ban. So is there any rain on the horizon? Alex Deacon has the outlook. The dry weather has continued into August and there's no sign of that really changing even well into next week. High pressure is moving in this weekend. It's going to bring most places a fine weekend with decent spells of sunshine. The main difference to that will be, of course, Scotland, where a weather front will bring cloud and some rain, particularly on Saturday morning. That rain fairly light and patchy, drifting from west to east. The far north always staying a bit damp, but elsewhere brightening up. And certainly for most of England, Wales, there'll be lengthy spells of sunshine on Saturday. Starts off a bit fresh, but temperatures will pick up through the day, getting into the low to mid-20s across the south, high teens further north. Sunday will be a similar story, so we are looking at a bit of rain and drizzle at times over the highlands, the western isles and the northern isles, but elsewhere most places dry with good spells of sunshine. And again, no rain expected across the south and east where we could really do with some. And temperatures getting a little higher on Sunday, getting more widely into the mid-20s across the south. And that is a sign of things to come. As we go into next week, the dry weather continues, the sunshine will continue, and the heat may well be returning. Thanks, Alex. Just before we go, here's Ollie Clayton with last week's highs and lows. Here are the UK weather extremes for the week beginning Monday the 25th of July. The highest temperature of the week was at Heathrow, London, last Friday, with a high of 28.4 Celsius. The early hours of Wednesday the 27th saw the lowest temperature at Tindrum, Stirling, when the minima hit a chilly 2.3 degrees. The wettest day was in Gogadan, Cardiganshire, where on Sunday 27.6 millimetres of rain fell, a week when many southern counties of England yet again saw no appreciable rain. Tyree, in the Hebrides, was the sunniest place, with 13.9 hours recorded last Thursday. Thanks, Ollie. That's it for Weather Snap. I'm Claire Nazir. Editor is Adrian Holloway. Weather Snap is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office Weather app.